A few months ago, I moved from Nashville, Tennessee to Columbus, Ohio, and Columbus is home to one of bodybuilding's greatest events. It is the Arnold Classic, and today I'm here with one of the greatest bodybuilders uh, anywhere in the world, Rich Gaspari. So uh, Great to thank be here. you, Rich. Uh, Rich has won countless bodybuilding awards. He won the very first Arnold Classic, yes. Mr. America, Mr. Universe, three-time runner-up on Mr. Olympia. He's also the CEO of a multi-million dollar nutritional business and uh, now adds another title to your many titles, author. So uh, we're uh, going to talk to you a little bit about your book, so thank you for speaking with me. Great. Um, so your new book here is called 51 Days, and um, it's a blueprint for physical fitness success, but really it's success tips for anything. Um, and I found it interesting, in 2011 you were on the cover of Iron Man magazine. Yes. But 23 years before, you were on the cover of Iron Man. I don't think that happens uh, too often. Not too often that people can uh, go from being, you know, a successful bodybuilder, taking a break, you know, basically doing another life of running an entire business, building that up, and then deciding to get myself back in shape like I did when I was competitive. So that's what I wanted to show, that there is no excuses that you can do anything you want to do. and. By getting on that cover was one of the things that I wanted to show the world that I could do. Well, it's about 51 days, and you got that call 52 days in advance to say, would you like to be on the cover? Yes. How, what was that 50, 52 day period like? What happened was it was the Memorial Day week, and I was, giving, I was given the, uh, the Muscle Beach Walk of Fame. There's a place in Venice Beach there that they have bronze plaques of former champions. And uh, John Balick, who owns Iron Man magazine said, you know, hey, it would be really neat to see you get back on the cover for all these years. He goes, what do you think? Can you do it? It's in July. So I counted the days and it was, it was 51 days to get into shape or 52 days to get into shape. And uh, I looked at him and I said, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so I decided to get myself back into shape, um, do everything that I did when I competed in bodybuilding, you know, training uh, five days a week. Follow a little bit of a different program because I'm, a, you know, not that I'm going to say I aged, but you know, training has to be done a little bit differently as you you get a little bit older. And you know, I did follow a very you know stringent diet, which still, if you look at my diet there, it's it's a lot of food, but it's eating six meals a day. By eating more frequently, your body's metabolism starts to get faster and faster, and that's what basically happened. And and you do outline all of that. Yes, I, I love one one thing you sh that struck me in the book is that you said start with where you are, and you talk about these emotions like anger, disgust, and frustration. But the way you talk about it is like you love it, mm -hmm. and that's not normal. Most people are not happy to be disgusted, but you somehow take disgust and turn that into or frustration or whatever that is and turn it into something positive. Well, the one thing in my mindset is always to look at the glass half full and half empty. So, you know, there's are a lot of emotions of, you know, say disgust and, you know, frustration, uh, you know, disappointment, you know, what can you do to turn those things around? I always believe in like, you know, turning a lemon into lemonade. There's always things, there's always, whenever there's conflicts, there's opportunities. So the same thing in, in doing something like this, you know, I looked at myself and said, you know, I was in decent shape because I have a very, you know, I have a decent metabolism, but can I get myself in that, you know, contest shape conditioning? And I just said to myself, you know what, I just have to do this one step at a time, look at what I did when I competed, and, and put those, uh, implement those things that I did into this, and slowly make the habits, the good habits come back of eating more frequently, doing the cardiovascular training, making sure that I was hitting my weight training, um, although I was like busy with uh, company uh, and also traveling for the company. I travel all around the world. I travel in places doing you know, seminars or I do PowerPoint presentations for my customers. So I'm constantly you know, working. So I'm not just lifting weights, I'm doing everything else and doing that part as well. Right, and, and running a business. So, yes. so when I think, when people look at you, right, they, they, let's go back in your 30s, they're looking at you, you had won all of these awards, I, I've listed a few, but they go on and on and on, mm -hmm. and they see all of your success, they see you on the cover of these magazines, they see that you had started this, uh, this business, and they think this, this you know, unbelievable success, he has a lucky charm following him, it's all lucky, but you talk about how, in, in your book, 
you went bankrupt, you moved in with your parents, you started this nutritional company, and then it got even worse. Yes. At, t talk about that, and how do you journey from that kind of point, uh, and then journey back and using that attitude? I wanted to let you know the people know that, as you said, I wasn't born with a silver spoon, and that things weren't just so lucky. You know, everybody has hardships, and it's how you take those hardships and turn them around. So. You know, when I was as a competitive bodybuilder, I got injured, could no longer compete, I didn't have myself set uh, well, you know, financially. So as, as the book says, I went bankrupt. Uh, my parents fortunately let me come live with them. Uh, and that was very hard when you're very successful with, mm -hmm. you know, Porsches and fancy, you know, houses and being really, you know, this top guy and all of a sudden moving back into the bedroom that you were when you were this young kid. It's very hard to do, but you know, I put my mind in place that I said, you got to take three steps back to go five steps forward. So I knew by by stepping back that this was all in plan for me to be able to be successful, you know, later on. So it's something that I just felt I had to do. Well, well, you did it, and and now your new company here is is a multi mega million dollar success. It's won vendor of the year from GNC and. Uh, and others, so it, it keeps growing. And as as you look about, as you look at that success, I thought one of the things that was interesting was that you talk about the team of people that mm -hmm. surround you. And I thought of uh, you talk about iron sharpening iron when you were competing. Mm -hmm. You talk about surrounding yourself with business. Why is why is it not just an individual sport and sort of an individual game? Why is why are why is it so important to have the people around you? Well, there are a lot of people that try to run companies and micromanage and that's where they're not successful. What you have to do is be able to know your place and what you're good at. And then you find that place, then find the people uh, to do the job that are the things that you're not good at. And by being able to do that, that's how you can grow you know, your business. I knew that I was very good in front of people, uh, in you know, being motivating, being able to push my brand, you know, having that passion that people can see. But, you know, if you were there going to say I was going to be an accountant, I can't do that kind of stuff. Uh, logistics, I can't do that stuff. You know, even marketing, I have good ideas, but I'd rather have a well-honed in marketing expert to be able to market my brand or be able to take my vision and be able to get that vision out, you know, for, for the public. So you have to be able to not micromanage and be able to find the right team to be able to grow. And put put them in place and, and let put them, them in place. Yes. Well, let's talk about your dad because your dad plays this this role in this book um, from the beginning and kind of throughout. But one of the things that had hit me was when he's saying to you, "You can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. Whatever it is." Mm -hmm. And you you use that to again fuel your success. It seems like anything that's thrown at you, you're turning it from a negative to a positive, like you said, mm -hmm. and using that. But but talk about your dad and the influence that he had. Well, I have to say, I had the deepest respect for my dad because there's a guy with a second grade education that wanted to make a better place for himself, but not only for himself, but for his children. And he wanted to always become an American. You know, he was an Italian immigrant. Moved, he couldn't even move to America. Had to move to Canada at the time, then from Canada uh, then 10 years later, get to move to the United States. And then from there, he was bankrupt in Canada, had a business because of the cold weather. He, he was a mason contractor, lost everything, started all over in his mid-40s, uh, and then grew a business, like I said, with a, with a second grade education. He was able to still have you know, multiple houses and rentals because my dad believed that you, know, you had to really work hard. And I looked at my dad and he instilled that work ethic in me that you know, nothing's given to you if you don't work hard. And he would show me, like, you know, if you want something rich, you got to work for it. And uh, that's some of the things that my dad did. Now, he didn't necessarily believe in my vision of being this bodybuilder, but because he didn't at, the, at first believe in it, I had to really want to show him, and I wanted to make him proud of me. So it made me work harder to show him I'm in the right path in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's a great story. Uh, Rich, talk to the person who right now is discouraged. They, w whatever it is, whether it's physical, whether they're, they have a goal in front of them, they're just not feeling right. They're in that really down spot. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at this book and they're mm -hmm. saying, you know, if, if I pick up this book and start some of the things that are here, will this help me? Will this 51 day journey help me um, kind of get back on track? Because I'm not feeling 
I'm not feeling right. What would you say to that person? Well, as you said before, this book, you know, I happen to be a bodybuilder, but this book is not just a bodybuilding book. It's about anyone who has self challenges to be able to overcome them and, you know, things that happen in your life that a lot of people just give up um, and know that if they can continue to try and get over those things, kind of like, you know, Frank Sinatra's song, That's Life, you know, you, you, uh, you can succeed, but then you can fail, and you can come right back up. Uh, and that's the way I've always believed, you know, you have ups and downs in life, and I'm going to continue having ups and downs in life. Uh, even successful, you, you know, in my success now, there are pitfalls and failures that then I have to overcome as, a, you know, this person who has this multi-million dollar business. So you have to try to continue on and become successful. So for anyone out there, you know, it's not giving up and believing that there's ways to hmm. overcome, you know, the failures and then go from your low points. The only way you're going to go is back up. Well, it's not only Gaspari supplements that that you can take, but also Gaspari Attitude, and hopefully everyone will get that supplement through this book because yes. it, it kind of rubs off. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you.